can close the material editor, go to the create menu in 3D Max, and in the viewport, drag out a plane, and then we are going to make this plane equal length and width. I'll use 150 by 150. Make sure it's 25 by 25 segments. I'll hit G to turn off the grid so we can see it a little bit easier. And now we're going to go into particle flow and spawn a particle at every vert of this plane. So if we go to the graph editors menu and hit particle view, we can drag in an empty flow. And the first thing that I do whenever I drag in an empty flow is to select it. And then over here on the right, it defaults to 50% visibility in the viewport. And then when you render it, it actually shows 100. But I found it's much easier to just set this to 100 right away. Uh, because otherwise you'll wonder why half your particles are missing later. So the next thing that we need to do is drag a birth event and then a position object right here. And I'll drag that in right below. I'm going to set the birth emit stop to zero so all the particles show up on the first frame. And then the position object, I'm going to hit add and then I'll select that plane that we just created. I'm going to set it to vertices all. And then once you connect your particle flow source here to the event one, then you see your particles showing up on the verts. And because we have a 25 by 25 segment plane, there's going to be 676 particles in total. So that will give us a particle per vertex of the plane. Now I'm going to close our particle view temporarily while I create a box. I'll just drag a box into the viewport here. And then in the settings, I'm going to change this box to one unit by one unit by one unit. So. I will go back into particle view and I will drag in a shape instance operator from the depot down here after position object and then select our particle geometry object as that cube that we just created and in order to see that we need to select the display and instead of ticks we will set this to geometry and now you can see the boxes that we just created are now each particle object on the on each vertex um, so in the shape instance operator you can now drag up the scale to whatever size you want it to be. In this case I'll make the boxes almost with no gaps between them, just a small, a small space so we can more easily see. If we look at the initial particle that we created you'll notice that the pivot point is at the bottom and that's what makes this effect work because the white and black values of the texture are going to scale it up and down and since it scales from the pivot point at the bottom, then it will lift higher or lower. So the way to do this is I'm going to turn off the particle flow source by hitting the light bulb here. And then I will close particle view for now, open the material editor, and apply this material to the plane by selecting the plane and then hitting apply material to selection. And if you want to see what the material looks like on the plane, you just hit this button right here that shows the material in the viewport. So now you can see the noise texture on our plane. If you want to see it more clearly, you can change the noise threshold over here in the material editor. If you lower the high, then we'll, well, that was probably too low, I guess. I'll try 0.7 for the high, and then I'll bring the low up to 0.2 or so, and maybe 0.3. And now you can start to see some of the texture actually happening in there. And if you want to get more detail, we can lower the size of it. And you'll start to see how you can change these textures really easily. And it will always update with your particles. So now that we have that set up, we can go back into the particle view and turn our particles back on. And we will now add the data operator.